Good morning, Houston. I mean, I was uh, what we call an operational default right there. Uh, but I'm back and we're live again. Uh, my name is Patrick Omosagi. I'm not today joined by anybody. Uh, Jumoke is away and Nishala is also away. But you can still go ahead and like us on Facebook. I mean, the fact that the young lady, uh, the ladies are not here doesn't mean we can't go on. So I'm going to take this. Uh, I'm going to drive solo today. And I'm going to do the same things we normally do. We're going to uh, involve you. I mean, you can call us at an, uh, our usual number. But the first thing is to get into the stories, what we call trending stories. And the first one really is very interesting. And I say interesting because the president of Nigeria has resumed work after a six-day vacation in London. He, before he left, he had sent a formal letter to the Senate president and the uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and he's done the same on his, on his resumption. So he's back into the country and he's resumed work. And really one of his first duties after resuming work was to meet with the president of Germany, who was, visiting, who was also visiting the country at the same time. Uh, the German president, uh, Joachim, I think it's Guac, uh, has been in Nigeria, I think, a couple of days before the president returned and he had done some other things. Uh, but uh, this was the, the picture you see right now is the official meeting or the official welcoming of the president of, of Germany to Nigeria. Now, the issues in Nigeria are really beyond, uh, uh, no, the issues in Nigeria are what we're actually more concerned about. Now, again, we had the unfortunate incident in one of the refugee camps where, we, where people have been driven away from their homes by Boko Haram. There was a suicide bombing in one of those camps. 51 were feared dead. I mean, this is, uh, I, I don't want to say that this trend is continuing and, you know, it's really bothersome. It's something we really have to find a way to curb. I mean, if we're having to get people blown up in what should be a sanctuary, you know, where a safe sanctuary for them, uh, that's really unfortunate. But in, it, it, and in the meantime, the Naira keeps going up or losing pace to the dollar. As at yesterday, the Naira was trading at 333 Naira to one dollar. And that was right after the Bankers Committee came out to remove, after a meeting, the Bankers Committee in Nigeria had a meeting, to remove what? They removed uh, the purchase of, the do of dollars for school fees abroad and for medical bills. That immediately spiked money in the country. That, I mean, look, 333 I never believed, I mean, I could see that. But there's no doubt this is all due to the scarcity of the dollar in the Nigerian system. I mean, uh, what do we call it? Uh, uh, we call this amount, I mean, we, we, we are left with about 27 billion in our external reserves now. I mean, this is the money we've always used to back the dollar. The government rate still remains at 197, or is it 199, but just to write about 200. But government rate 200, the black market rate is 338. That's a lot of difference. And it's a lot of space in between that people are going to eventually, you know, scheme, out, scheme on. We'll take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll do a, little, a few more stories about what is trending in Nigeria and in other parts of Africa. So let's take this break right now. We'll be right back. Welcome back. When I introduced the program earlier, not as if today is of any importance, but tomorrow 
is of importance, at least in, within this culture. And really, most of the cultures uh, all over the world have adopted Valentine's Day as a very big issue. So tomorrow is Valentine's. I wish everybody a happy one. You know, go and um, impress your loved ones, but your wife, your girlfriend, your kids, whatever. Impress your loved ones. It's Valentine's. And we're going to take a piece of music now just to put our people, the people of Houston, into the mood of Valentine. So we'll take that music uh, piece right now and we'll again become, come right back and continue with more stories in the news. Because it is the season of love, we are wishing yeah, you yeah, a happy yeah. Valentine's Day. We love you. Oh. Welcome back. While you were gone, I mean, a couple of uh, things, I mean, someone actually sent me a text and said, uh, why don't you talk about the issues with the Nigerian budget? So here it is. What is wrong with the Nigerian budget? The first thing we heard about it a few months ago or was that it was missing. And that caused a whole load of uh, angst in the society. How can your budget be missing? The budget was presented by the president to the assembly and all of a sudden a couple of weeks later it was missing. Now that we've found the budget, people are finding things that you know just they can't believe in the budget. So what's wrong with the Nigerian budget? And most of you already have a number. We'll put the number on the screen now. This is one I would love to discuss with our audience. I mean with people around here. Just call us at 713-340-7514. I really want to understand and what's your take, what's, your, what, what's going on, what is going on in Nigeria. Some people say this is embarrassing. Now, what are the embarrassing things we're finding in this budget? That we pay rent in Aso Rock? Did someone really write that in our budget? It needs to be explained. That the Aso Rock Clinic will spend more money in this fiscal year than all the teaching hospitals in Nigeria? Can that, is this true? I mean, that uh, uh, Vice President Oshibaju's office, his office library, is going to take him, or going to have more money to spend than all the public libraries in Nigeria. I didn't even know there were still any public libraries in Nigeria. So what is wrong with our budget? I need someone to please explain this to me. I mean, like I said, a lot of people have said this is embarrassing, but I think this is beyond that. There's got to be something wrong. I didn't know that people still used pencil and paper to write in things. I mean, most budgets are created through uh, uh, design softwares. I mean, that. Uh, but look, I, I can't go into, but it's really kind of... Uh, Something I can't believe. I mean, some of the stories we're hearing, I actually don't believe they are true, but people do say that's what in the budget. So I need phone calls. I need people to discuss this with me. Here is another great story, and I use the word great about it. A retired air marshal, I believe, Abiola Amosun, they found a million dollars in what we call a soak away in Nigeria. A million dollars hidden behind we know what in his home. Again, this is one of those stories that you hear. It's been carried by the major newspapers. But like I just told a friend, I need a video because I don't see how this happens and nobody videotapes it. You don't need any real big camera. Every phone has a video, I mean, has a camera on it. We need pictures, we need video of this kind of things. I mean, when it happens, it has to be recorded. But people, I mean, like I said, it's been carried by the major newspapers and uh, uh, media houses in Nigeria. So there's some, probably some, a lot of truth to this, but I don't think it was found where they said it was found. They probably found a million dollars with him, but maybe not where Way because I, look, this is something that needs to be covered. But 
Abiola Amosu has been, uh, I think he's been arrested for, for them finding that kind of money in his uh, backyard. Let's put it that way. Let's move on. I had talked about the price of the Naira and against the dollar, or the price of the dollar in Naira, 338. What is happening now? And it's also been reported by a lot of people. There's a lot of racketeering going on. When you have a difference of 197 and 338, there's a lot of meandering that can be done between those two amounts. And that is what is happening. There's a story about, uh, you know, people that have been, there's stories about people that have been on what you call the CBN queue in order to buy money at the government rate. And you're never going to get it. And a bank comes to you and say, look, we can get you what you want, but you're going to pay 250, 270 naira to a dollar. That money doesn't go to the CBN because the CBN is selling at 197. So the difference between 197 and 275 goes to the individual or to the bank. Now, whether the bank uses that at its own profit or goes to the individual bankers that do that deal, we don't know. But I can tell you, when you have that disparity between official and an official rate, that's what's going to happen. That's just the way humans are going to run business because scarcity is what would cause that at any time. So we're having that very, very serious problem. Here is the last story in a stories coming out of Nigeria. The electricity tariff is going up. We're going to pay more for power consumption. And the labor unions are in a fight with the government. It's very difficult for those of us out here to understand what really goes on in Nigeria when it comes to power. There's barely any. I mean, I spoke to someone on my way to the studio. 16 hours, last 16 hours, they've had nothing. And he says, and they expect us to pay more. But I said, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there, but at some time we're going to have to pay more than what we're paying because we pay really nothing. I mean, where I stay when I go home, we pay almost an equivalent of $50 to a very, very large consumption or compound. I mean, I know we don't have it a lot of time, but we pay $50. I mean, that is really very little. I mean, compared to what we pay here. I mean, I understand. I'm not, I mean, the comparison shouldn't be a, a Coke for Coke, really. But at some time, we have to pay more. And I trust the person in charge. And we were all happy when he got that position, Raji Fashola. I don't think he's increasing tariff in order to make more money for himself or for the government. I think he's increasing tariff because there's a need for tariffs to go up in order for us to have better infrastructure in our, electric in our electricity grids and all that. So that's our last story on the trending stories. We'll take another quick break. When we come back, we'll go to uh, what, uh, what I consider, what we said, it's going to be a kind of a book review segment. We'll have a pastor back in the studio this morning. So he'll join me immediately I return. Let's take this break now.
Welcome back, Houston. I mentioned in my introduction that I will, we, at some time we we're going to play or that we covered the opening of an emergency unit, a standalone unit by a Nigerian, uh, Dr. Foye Kemi. Uh, this is a great achievement for because she's, uh, she's an, she, I, 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 I know ladies don't like their ages being told, but she's under 30. Uh, I mean, so for her to do this, it was a, it's a great achievement on her part. And we're wishing her all the best because it's also, I mean, obviously it's a business. And so, but she's done this. We have the video to prove this to, to our audience. But it's not really, when I use the word prove, it's because we were there to cover the opening, which is a magnificent opening. I mean, it was one of those things where you go there and you see just not the appreciation or the love that people came to show to her for what she's doing, but it was just a great day to cover. So we'll show you that. But in the meantime, I also want to say we're trying to get her onto the program to come out here live to answer questions on health and, you know, on medicine and all that because she's one of us, she's part of us, and she's doing something unique. But we're still trying to get her, but as anybody that has set up a business or done any kind of opening of uh, something of this magnitude, she's extremely busy, and we appreciate that, but we'll get her here sometime. So let's sit back and let's watch the opening of Dr. Foye Kemi's emergency unit. Emergency Room is a brand new standalone full full service emergency room with state of the art equipment such as x-ray, CT scanner, ultrasound and more. They are fully equipped and have highly trained staff ready to treat a variety of medical conditions including lab staff services and whereas Lifesavers Emergency Room provides our community with the highest comprehensive care for patients. They provide this care with compassion and expertise. And whereas Lifesavers Emergency Room offers an array of services, their goal is to deliver high quality, affordable, and efficient adult and pediatric emergent and urgent care. And now, therefore, I, Ted Poe, member of Congress representing the second congressional district of Texas, do hereby proclaim January 15, 2016 as a day to acknowledge the grand opening and ribbon cutting of Lifesavers Emergency Room and to recognize the essential treatment and care of care services that it will provide our community. Thank you so much. January 15 belongs to us. Today, to this evening, we're doing a ribbon cutting for Lifesavers Emergency Room. They're our newest member of our chamber. Of course, when people join our chamber, we like to do a ribbon cutting to celebrate their business opening. And so it's a party and it's all about them. So that's what we've done today. Um, I think it's an amazing opportunity for people to know what's in their community uh, when they need those emergency services and maybe they don't want to crowd up the ERs in the hospitals. And so it's great to have this remote location to be able to go to. So I encourage the community to all be educated about emergency rooms and what they can do and the services they provide. My name is 
Dr. Foye Ikiato. I am a board certified emergency medicine physician. I earned my bachelor's at the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia, and I uh, went straight from that to medical school, University of Wisconsin School of Public Health. And uh, from there, I uh, went to Emory University, which is in Atlanta, and that's where I did my residency in emergency medicine. Nationwide and probably throughout the world, emergency services is something that is needs resuscitation. Um, there are thousands and millions of people who come into whatever unfortunate circumstances that need a physician uh, on the spot at the time and they all end up in the emergency room which is what I love and it's my passion but I do um, have a heart for the people that come to the emergency room and they're faced with what ER doctors see every day which is a system that is behind in the times to some extent. Um, it's a clogged system. Facilities like Lifesavers Emergency Room are able to provide care for patients on site, on the spot. We're able to provide results within a few hours or less than an hour for patients. And they're able to leave and go back to their day, back to work, back to their families. And that's, that's something that appeals to me after working in so many ERs and facilities um, over the last several years. We care about their, them and what matters to them. So your cold is just as important to me as it is to you, or your fractured ankle or your chest pain is just, a, that's my priority when you walk in this door. And all our physicians who work, work here is that we are, we're just as vested in you getting back to your normal state of health as you are. Um, so the difference between us and maybe any other freestanding is definitely going to be the service. We provide fast care, efficient care. We Oh, don't order tests that don't need to be ordered. We don't, um, just, we don't just push patients through the system. The equipment that is here is designed to be able to product, provide the results immediately. So when patients go get their x-ray, the physician can look at the images immediately uh, and be able to tell you, okay, that is a fracture, that is a pneumonia, there is gas under the skin, these, and, and the physician is trained to be able to make a decision based on what they see on those images. The lab is designed to be provide immediate results so that the physician can make a decision immediately. The difference between us and say the hospital is that you have you have radiology department, you have a pharmacy department, you have lab department in the hospital as well, but the entire hospital shares that same department. So the patient in the ICU, the patient in the ER, the patient on the floor Everybody is being, all everybody's labs, everybody's imaging, everybody's studies are going to the same department. And so there is a level of triage that goes on. If a patient comes to the emergency room at a particular time and ambulance patients come in, ambulance, ambulance patients will trump the patient who walked in. So the, the freestanding ER is designed to be able to care for patients that didn't necessarily have to come in through an ambulance or, or did walk in, but they still need emergency care. They just don't have to wait in line as much when they come to our facility. We advertise no wait time, which is exactly what we provide in that patients can come straight back and they can be seen by a physician and they can continue with their life. They don't have to spend, they don't have to give up six hours or 12 hours of their day in a facility waiting on other people's results to come back before theirs come, gets you know done. Just having access to an emergency room that can get you in and out fast, get you taken care of, uh, whether it's something small, uh, as, as, as small as a, as a stubbed toe to as, as big as a heart attack, just having access to something so close to home and so easy to get to and not have to sit in a waiting room for four hours and waiting for a uh, physician to, to help you. I mean, it's, it's going to change things in the community. Honestly, this facility is just so close to my own home. So um, you know, it, it, it truly is just a uh, it's a great it's a great uh, opportunity for, for the whole community. And uh, so I just thank them for, for choosing this location. I feel very excited that you know we were starting to be known as a community, and a lot of people so far came out of support and showed their love. Well, it took, it took a lot of time. You know, we this idea has been conceived for about uh, two years now. We thought about it and decided to work on it. You know, as you can see, having it viewed took about seven to six months. You know, but it took, uh, it took a lot of time and commitment to make sure this this happened. 
Well, I just want to ensure the community, the Willowbrook community, the Tombow and Cypress community, the city of Houston as a whole, that we're not just here to serve them as a business, you know, but we we, we feel like we owe them the social responsibility. As you can see, we're giving out free flu shots to the community. We're offering uh, free CPR classes and a host of other discounted services. It's very easy, even if you're in healthcare, to be, um, to, to get bypassed, to get shuffled along, and that's what emergency services are here for, is that you can diagnose and really impact somebody's life immediately because of an x-ray or a scan or doing the right test, you can change somebody's life or save somebody's life. So that's why I went into the emergency room, because I want to save people's lives. Welcome back. I mean, what you just watched was the grand opening of uh, Lifesavers Emergency Room. I mean, that was Dr. Fola Kemi Kiato. And I mean, you could, I mean, I'm sure if you'd noticed, there was an older gentleman that her father was there. And obviously, uh, we, had to, we had an interview with the husband, Ose Kiato. Uh, look, so please, uh, as Nigerians, let's uh, find a way to patronize her. It's a great beginning for her. She has a long way to go in this business, and uh, let's go out there. It might be a little bit out of our way where we're concentrated in the southwest and all that. But look, she's a good doctor, and she'll be willing to take care of us in our own Nigerian way. So let's do that. I mean, let's support her. Let's, uh, you know, let's, let's, that's really the word. Let's support her and her business. I mean, it's a great move on her part to start this, this early in her life in, in, in a emergency room business. So let's, uh, again, I said earlier that we're having um, uh, tomorrow's Valentine's. I mean, it's not that I want to happen that, but, you know, it's one of those things. You live in this culture. It's become part of it. You know, all the kids are excited about it. Uh, thank God it's not, a, it's not a school day, but I know that, you know, they had to take cards and all that to school yesterday and possibly candy on Monday for whatever reason. But we, we live in the, we live in a world that celebrates things like this. We have to do it, kind of. So we'll take a break. We'll have some good music to follow. We'll do that right now. Because it is the season of love, we are wishing you a happy Valentine's Day. We love you. Welcome back, Houston. Let me say this uh, from, I mean, I, I want to use a caption that um, was very popular. I think it was a, it was a stage play uh, many, many years ago. Our husband has gone mad again. I think that's a, but I'll just use this caption. Our coach is running mad again. That is uh, the coach of the Super Eagles, uh, Sunday Olise. I'm in support of Sunday Olise as the coach of the Super Eagles. I think, I believe he has a little bit of the background that can help Nigerian football. But when I use this caption that our coach is running mad again, it's because of what he has said. On his YouTube uh, page, he released um, a video calling or saying that uh, there's some insanity going on in the Nigerian populace because of the criticism of him and his failure at the last uh, African championship, which we call Ch the Chan Championship. Uh, he seemed to have lambasted everybody that uh, Chan was a second-rate tournament, which I, I agree because I even said that before we lost on it. I had said that on this very program. It's a second-rate tournament. I mean, we're crying you and, you know, we win one game and we're all over the place and doling out money to the players. But he now, he's saying that it's a second rate time. It's not, a, it's not the biggest tournament in his life. And he's coming out and telling us that, look, he was begged to take this job. Now, that's why I say he's running mad again. Because, look, you don't say these things to your employer. And I personally think he's had enough of it. And he was looking for a way to have been fired. But I don't think the NFF has anywhere to go. So they've kind of made up. The NFF says he's apologized. He himself has come out and, 
He said he's apologized to the NFF and all that. But it's kind of funny why a coach of a national team will come out and say some of the things. It's, been, it's when you want to quit, when you want to break ties with your employer. That's when you say things like that, that I spent my personal money to feed the players and all that. I understand all those things have to be corrected in the Federation. But the coach doesn't come out to say that. You know, you want to quit, quit. Don't say, don't say things that will make them, make them force you out. And I think that's what he was looking for. But he didn't get his way. So he's going to be there. Now he has a big problem on his hands. Because in March, we play a two-leg series with Egypt in five days. Now, Egypt is no run over. Now, why are we playing Egypt this early in any kind of qualification? It's because of where we stand in the FIFA rankings. We're now much so much lower in the FIFA rankings, so we're always going to have to meet one of the bigger names in African football. And it's going to be the same thing in our World Cup draw if we don't improve our rankings in the next uh, one year. And uh, this is going to be very important to watch as time goes on. So I wish Coach Olise luck. I wish uh, Super Eagles all the best but we have problems within the system of sports in Nigeria. Uh, right now, I'm working to see if we can interview, uh, I hope, the Minister of Sports at some time, because we have a big world event coming up in August, and that's the Olympics. And we have some teams that have qualified. Obviously, a team which I'm very familiar with, the basketball team, has qualified to be at the Olympics. So, I mean, we're happy that these things are happening. We have a lot of our athletes. Uh, uh, a track and field athletes that live and train in America would like to know what is the progress, what are they doing to support them, how are things working out? Because we don't want to go to we don't want to go to Rio in August and lay an egg like we did in 2012 in London. We don't want to do that. Nigeria is too big a country. Nigeria is too gifted a country to have this kind of zero gold medals or zero medals at all in an Olympic event. But for now, I think we must have had a little bit of misunderstanding. The pastor that was supposed to come in to do his book review uh, did not make it out here today, and we've not heard from him. But we're not going to spend any more time, but I'll say right here that we'll see you next week and hope that all the things you want to do for yourself, starting from tomorrow, which is Lover's Day, comes out well for you. So right now, have a good day. Bye-bye.